Hello everyone. My today's topic is about one of the common childhood problems about pneumonia in children. Uh, specifically, I will talk on community acquired pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia is defined as inflammation of uh, the lung parenchyma and it is a leading infectious cause of death globally among children younger than 5 years, accounting for an estimated 1 million days each year. Pneumonia mortality is closely linked to poverty and more than 99% of pneumonia days are in low and middle income countries. Uh, WHO has developed a standard case management guidelines to reduce the 1 million days or 20% of all childhood diseases uh, caused by pneumonia uh, through early diagnosis and treatment. So it defines as pneumonia is an acute disease with cough or difficult breathing combined with fast breathing with age-specific cutoff values for increased respiratory rate. Uh, children with lower chest wall drawing is classified as severe pneumonia as uh, WHO definition. Uh, while it is estimated that this criteria detect over 80% of children that require antibiotic treatment for probable bacterial pneumonia or hospital care for severe disease, 20 to 30 percent of children fulfilling this criteria receive unnecessary antimicrobials for non-severe viral respiratory infection. Uh, this is especially true for children with expiratory wheezing due to asthma, bronchiolites, or other viral respiratory infections, who are often misclassified as pneumonia requiring antimicrobial treatment uh, based on this WHO definition. So, uh, this WHO definition of pneumonia is used mainly by lower level healthy care workers. Uh, also, most cases of pneumonia are caused by microorganisms. Non infectious causes include uh, aspiration of food or gastric acid or foreign bodies, hydrocarbons or lipoid substance, uh, hypersensitivity reactions, and also drug or radiation due to pneumonites. The cause of pneumonia in an individual patient is often difficult to determine because direct sampling of lung tissue is invasive and rarely performed. Uh, bacterial cultures of sputum or upper respiratory tract samples uh, do not accurately reflect the cause of lower respiratory tract infection. Uh, Streptococcus pneumonia or pneumococcus is the most common bacterial pathogen in children uh, between 3 weeks to 4 years of age. Whereas mycoplasma pneumonia and chlamydia pneumonia are the most frequent bacterial pathogens uh, in children age 5 years and older. In addition to pneumococcus, other bacterial causes of pneumonia in previously healthy children include uh, group A streptococcus or streptococcus pyogenes and staphorus. Uh, and also the incidence of pneumonia caused by H. influenza or streptopneumonia has been significantly reduced in areas where routine immunization has been uh, implemented. Uh, viral pathogens are the most common cause of low respiratory tract infection in infants and the children uh, older than one month but younger than five years of age. Of the respiratory viruses, RSV and rhinovirus are the most commonly identified pathogens, especially in children younger than two years of age. Other common viruses causing pneumonia include uh, influenza virus, parainfluenza virus, adenovirus, and enteroviruses. Infection with more than one respiratory virus occurs in up to 20% of cases and the children who are immunocompromised or who have certain medical comorbidities may be at risk for specific pathogens such as pseudomonas species in patients with cystic fibrosis. When we see the pathogenesis, the lower respiratory tract possesses a number of defense mechanisms against infection including mucociliary clearance, macrophages, secretory IgA, and also clearing of the airways by coughing. Uh, previously, it was believed that the lower respiratory tract was, in the absence of infection, kept sterile by these mechanisms. Uh, however, currently it was said that the lower respiratory tract contains diverse microbial communities. And this data have challenged the traditional model of pneumonia pathogenesis that maintained uh, pneumonia was the result of invasion of the sterile lower respiratory tract by a single pathogen. Uh, rather, the current uh, conceptual model postulates that pneumonia results from disruption of a complex lower respiratory ecosystem that is a site of dynamic interaction between potential pneumonia pathogens, resident microbial communities, and host immune defenses. Uh, viral pneumonia results from uh, spread of infection along the lower airways accompanied by direct injury of the respiratory epithelium which results in airway obstruction from 
swelling abnormal mucus secretion and the cellular debris the small caliber of airways in young infants makes such patients particularly susceptible to severe infection atelectasis interstitial edema hypoxemia from ventilation perfusion mismatch often uh, accompany airway obstruction viral infections of the respiratory tract can also predispose to secondary bacterial infection by disturbing normal host defense mechanisms altering secretion through disruption in the respiratory microbiota bacterial pneumonia most often occurs when respiratory tract organisms colonize the trachea and subsequently gain access to the lungs but it might result from direct seeding of lung tissue after bacteremia uh, the pathologic process varies according to the invading organisms strep pneumonia produces local edema that, that aids in the proliferation of organisms and they spread into the adjacent portion of the lung often resulting in the characteristics focal lobar involvement or lobar pneumonia whereas group a streptococcus typically results in more diffuse lung involvement with interstitial pneumonia and staphylococcus pneumonia manifests as confluent bronchopneumonia which is often unilateral and characterized by irregular areas of cavitation of the lung parenchyma uh, which results in pneumatocele empyema and at times bronchopulmonary fistula uh, recurrent pneumonia is defined as two or more episodes in a single year or three or more episodes ever with radiographic clearing between occurrence and in this case an underlying disorder should be considered if a child experiences such recurrent pneumonia when we see clinical manifestation of pneumonia pneumonia is frequently preceded by several days of symptoms of upper respiratory tract infections like rhinitis and the cough in viral pneumonia low grade fever is common but mostly it is high grade fever in bacterial pneumonia uh, tachypnea is the most consistent clinical manifestation of pneumonia uh, increased work of breathing accompanied by intercostal subcostal suprasternal retraction nasal flaring and the use of accessory muscles is uh, common cyanosis and the lethargy might occur especially uh, in infants in the case of severe pneumonia Oscultation of the chest might reveal crackles and scattered wheezing, and it's often not possible to distinguish uh, viral pneumonia, especially adenovirus clinically from disease caused by atypical uh, pathogens such as mycoplasma and other bacterial pathogens. Bacterial pneumonia in older children typically begins suddenly with high fever, cough, and the chest pain, and drowsiness with intermittent period of restlessness, rapid respirations, anxiety, and occasionally delirium might be seen. Uh, splinting on the affected side to minimize pleuritic pain and the improved ventilation is noted such children might lie on one side with knees drawn up to the chest uh, physical finding depends on the stage of pneumonia uh, most of the time early in the course of the illness diminished breathing sound is uh, scattered crackles ronchi are commonly heard over the affected lung field with the development of increasing consolidation or complication of pneumonia such as pleural refusion or empyema dullness on percussion is noted and the breathing sound is made to be diminished and abdominal distension might occur because of gastric dilation from swallowed air or ileus and abdominal pain is also common in, in the case of lower lobe pneumonia and the liver might seem enlarged because of downward displacement of the diaphragm secondary to hyperinflation of the lungs and in infants there might be a prodrome of upper respiratory tract infection and a poor feeding Uh, this leads to abrupt onset of fever, restlessness, and respiratory distress. These infants typically appear ill with respiratory distress manifested as grunting, nasal flaring, intercostal, subcostal, suprasternal retraction, tachypnea, tachycardia, air anger, and often uh, cyanosis. Uh, when we see diagnosis of pneumonia, an infiltrate on chest radiograph, PA or lateral view supports the diagnosis of pneumonia and Images might also identify complications such as pleural infusion or empyema. And viral pneumonia is usually characterized by hyperinflation with bilateral interstitial infiltrate and the peribronchial coughing. And the confluent lower consideration is typically seen with pneumococcal pneumonia. Uh, currently, it's not recommended to do chest radiograph for children with suspected pneumonia uh, who are well enough to be managed as outpatient. So we do chest x-ray if the patient requires admission because of severity or if uh, the patient is not improving to our treatment appropriately. 
this is a chest x-ray of a patient with uh, pneumonia it shows right middle lobe consolidation or right middle lobe pneumonia and this one is a chest x-ray of a patient with pneumonia which shows uh, left pleural effusion uh, ultrasonography uh, can it can help to uh, see lung consolidation and air bronchograms or effusion so uh, ultrasonography is very helpful uh, in identifying consolidation and the effusion and also air bronchograms and the diagnosing pneumonia but it is uh, depending it depends on the experience of the person that is doing the procedure wbc count can be useful in differentiating viral from bacterial pneumonia in viral pneumonia the wbc count can be normal or slightly elevated with lymphocyte predominance uh, bacterial pneumonia is often associated with significant elevation of wbc count and the predominance of polymorph nuclear glucosides and the definitive diagnosis of viral infection rests on the detection of the viral genome or antigen in respiratory tract secretion and the definitive diagnosis of typical bacterial infection requires isolation of an organism from the blood pleural fluid or lung blood culture is positive in only 10 percent of children with pneumococcal pneumonia and it's not recommended for uh, non-toxic helping children treat as outpatient to send uh, blood culture uh, regarding treatment treatment of pneumonia is based on the age and the clinical appearance of the child and also the suspected etiology uh, for mildly ill children who do not require hospitalization high dose of amoxicillin is recommended and alternatively second generation cefarosporin such as cefroxim and amoxiclavulanate might be uh, prescribed for school age children and adolescent or when infection with mycoplasma pneumonia or chlamydia pneumonia is suspected a macrolide antibiotic is appropriate choice for outpatient management so we can prescribe azithromycin for five days uh, when we see factors suggesting need for hospitalization in children with pneumonia uh, age less than six months immunocompromised state toxic appearance moderate to severe respiratory distress hypoxemia or oxygen saturation less than 90 percent at room temperature uh, complicated pneumonia sickle cell anemia with acute chest syndrome vomiting or inability to tolerate oral fluids or medications severe dehydration and no response to appropriate oral treatment uh, those are indication to admit a children with pneumonia to hospital uh, if the decision is made to withhold antibiotic therapy on the basis of presumptive diagnosis of viral infection deterioration in clinical status should signal the possibility of superimposed bacterial infection and antibiotic therapy should be initiated uh, up to 30 percent of patients with known viral infection particularly influenza virus might have coexisting bacterial pathogen so uh, it needs careful follow-up if we uh, plan to do withhold antibiotic therapy by considering viral etiology uh, hospitalized children should receive uh, supportive care like uh, iv fluids uh, respiratory support such as uh, intranasal oxygen cpap or mechanical ventilation vasoactive medications for hypotension or sepsis physiology and antibiotics should generally be continued until the patient has been a febrile for 72 hours and the total duration should not be less than 10 days uh, if we are treating uh, atypical etiologies for school age children five days of azithromycin is uh, enough in addition to antibiotics oral zinc uh, for seven days may reduce mortality among children in developing countries with clinically defined severe pneumonia uh, bubble cpap improves mortality from pneumonia with hypoxemia compared with standard oxygen therapy in a setting without access to ventilatory derived cpap or mechanical ventilation uh, when we see the prognosis of pneumonia in children typically patients with uncomplicated community acquired bacterial pneumonia show response to the therapy with improvement in clinical symptoms such as fever cough tachypnea chest pain within uh, 48 to 72 hours of initiation of antibiotics radiographic evidence of improvement lags substantially behind clinical improvement and uh, a number of possibilities must be considered when a patient does not improve with appropriate antibiotic therapy uh, complications such as pleural effusion or uh, empyema bacterial resistance non bacterial etiologies such as viruses or fungus or aspiration of foreign bodies or food bronchial obstruction from endobronchial lesion foreign bodies or mucus plaques and the pre-existing disease such as immunodeficiency ciliary dyskinesia cystic fibrosis 
congenital lung valve formation such as pulmonary sequestration or congenital pulmonary airway malformation uh, should be suspected. And also other non-infectious causes such as bronchiolitis obliterans, hypersensitive pneumonitis, eosinophilic pneumonia, or granulomatous with sporangiitis should be suspected if the child is not improving to our treatment or if it is slowly resolving pneumonia. Uh, a chest X-ray is the first step in determining the reason for lack of response to the initial treatment. Bronchoalveolar damage might be indicated in children with respiratory failure, and CT scan might better identify complication or anatomic reason for a poor response. Uh, regarding complication, complication of pneumonia are usually the result of either direct spread of bacterial infection within thoracic cavity, such as pleural infusion in pyma or pericarditis, or might be due to bacterium and dermatologic spread, such as meningitis, endocarditis, suppurative arthritis, and osteomyelitis. Uh, SRS, strict pneumonia, and strict pathogens are the most common cause of uh, paranemonic fusion and uh, empyema. Uh, small, uh, that means less than 1 cm on lateral liquidus radiograph, free flowing paranemonic fusion often do not require drainage, but uh, response to antibiotic uh, therapy is common. Larger effusion should typically be drained, particularly if the effusion is purient or in pyema, or if it is associated with respiratory distress. Uh, chest ultrasound or CT might help in determining whether loculations are present, and the mainstay of therapy includes uh, antibiotic therapy and the drainage by tube thoracostomy with the installation of fibronalytic uh, agents such as urokinase, tryptokinase, and the like. Uh, regarding prevention, the introduction of uh, Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine resulting in substantial reduction in the incidence of pneumonia hospitalization among children. Influenza vaccine may also prevent pneumonia hospitalization among children and it should be administered to all children greater than 6 months of age. And for infants less than 6 months of age, household contact and other primary caregivers should be uh, immunized. Maintaining high rates of vaccination for H influenza type B, pertussis, measles remains important for prevention of pneumonia from these causes. Uh, this is all about what I have regarding pneumonia and pediatrics. Thank you for uh, listening.